Yo, this is Vey, this is Vey. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time clicking, my name is Devay, but I go by Vey. Long story short, I've been traveling the past two years and I stumbled across Africa because why not? Especially for a person of African descent. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm a Jamaican born in America. Both parents are from Jamaica. My whole family immigrated. I'm the first immigrant child of the family, if that makes sense, first generation. So that's why I talk like this and not Jamaican Patois like you're probably expecting. Anyways, I wanna talk about my experience in Africa for the past three months. Right now I'm on, in America, but I wanna reflect on my experience in Tanzania and Kenya for those three months. So I wanna cover a few things I wrote down. I got, I'm gonna cover what the food was like, the culture, how I was treated, dating, and the expenses. Money, money, money. And before I cover those five things, follow me on Instagram, at Vevante, I'll put it in the description. You can DM me if you're looking to host me anywhere in Africa, things like that, you know, we could talk, we could chop it up and things like that. Cause I'm always traveling. We're gonna start with food. How was the food in Tanzania and Kenya? So I'm gonna start with the food is great. The food was great. I liked it. I liked it. The food was great. Um, the more closer you are to like villages and stuff, the more nutritious stuff you get. You know, they have like a lot of varieties of teas and porridges. A lot of fruits everywhere, like bananas, um, passion fruits, guava, just everything. Mostly depends on the region, but for the most part, you have access to a lot of stuff. Now I wanna say, compared to Jamaican food, you can't compare, you can't compare. So like, what I realized, um, I don't know if this is for all of East Africa, because I'm only speaking for where I experienced, so politely correct me if I'm wrong, but I noticed a lot of the food on this side is not very like um, spicy and flavorful. Like they don't they don't put so many spices like in one dish. Like, you know, if you try like Jamaican food or Caribbean food, like you taste like the different flavors and, and, and spices and things like they, they just cook a different way. Even like when they're cooking meat and stuff, I tell people all the time. Like in um, Kenya and Tanzania, for example, like they'll have like these little, they'll have like a stick and the stick will have like meat on it, like a kebab. And they'll season the meat as it's cooking. Like they'll put salt and those things like a little after, like they don't really do it before. And when it's finished, it's not really tender. Like you gotta really chew, chew sometimes. It's nice though, but most times I got it, it was like very, very chewy. And that was just a little different because you know like when you're making jerk chicken you you put the seasoning like two days one day before time so the seasoning like sinks into the into the meat so that's one thing but the food out there was excellent though i will warn you i did get food poisoning i think like twice man in tanzania like i don't know what it was i was eating off of the street which was my fault. You want to be careful with your eating and use your common sense. But me, I was just freestyling, so I paid the price. It was like this little uh, rice doughy thing. I ate it, man, the next day. Me and this other guy were out of business, man. So yeah, uh, I warn you about that, especially if you're coming from the US, your stomach might not be used to the food and you probably will get like diarrhea like once before your system is in check. But overall, the food was nice. I actually miss it. Being in the U.S. right now, the food, the food is garbage. garbage compared to the stuff I was getting out there. Like the abundance of fruits and stuff every day. So good for your skin and mind, body, and soul, everything. So yeah, food was now nice. the culture. Um, for me, it wasn't too much of a culture shock because I've been traveling uh, pretty much my whole life. Even when I was younger, I used to travel around with my mom a lot. So I was used to seeing different cultures every other month every other year and things like that and compared to american culture it is very very different and east africa is very sophisticated like 
in Tanzania, like it's only it's either you Muslim, Christian, or yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, when you go to Dar es Salaam, most people are like Muslims. Um, yeah, that's what I experienced. Even in Arusha, I think it was like a good mixture, like Christian, Muslim, but they're very like sophisticated. Like the women, you'll never see no local women in shorts during the day or anything like that. Like it's only at night, like if they're going to pubs and stuff like that, but you'll never see the women showing too much skin at all. And they like to dress in the, um, what's the thing the women dress in? It like covers their whole body and you can only see their face or head sometimes. You know, if you know what it is, just comment it, but yeah. A lot of them, they wear that. And yeah, uh, one thing I didn't like about that was, um, it's like taboo to have your, like it's weird to have your shirt off. Like if you're in the village or something, like people might look at you a little strange if you're just walking around with no shirt, like. I, it took me a while to wrap my head around that, especially because a place like Dar es Salaam, which is ridiculously hot, the hottest place I've ever been in my life. And you're telling me I gotta be wearing these hot ass, tight ass clothes and I can't let my pores breathe. Kenya was a little more, um, not sophisticated, but I'm only speaking for Nairobi because that's where I was. But you know, like that's how it is when you're in towns anyway, people are gonna be a lot more like, you know, so yeah, when you're in Nairobi, you'll see people dressing a lot more like how you see people dress in the U.S. and those type of things. But the culture is very similar between Tanzania and Kenya. It's just in Kenya, they speak a lot more English and they mix it up with the Swahili. And it's just a different, just a slightly different vibe. But Tanzania and Kenya, very, very similar. How was I treated? How was I treated? Overall, throughout both countries, I was treated fantastic i was treated with so much love i stayed in so many places and was hosted and welcomed everywhere um especially when you tell people you're jamaican or have any ties to do with jamaica they just automatically like hail you up like hey yo rasta rasta even without me saying anything people call me that anyway like i'll just be walking in the street and the locals would be like yo rasta rasta trying to sell me something, things like that. So everywhere I was treated with so much love and people are always willing to, you know, share with you, give you food, like, it just be the little thing. Oh yeah, I'm in Tanzania. I'm in the same way that I'm in the same way. 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 I'm in America, Jamaica, Brazil, mm. eh, of course, Mm, Argentina. Mm. Ah. <laughs> okay. I'm black in Jesus. Like, even this one day I'm on a bus, right? And I'm on a bus going from Morogoro to Arusha. And this girl sits next to me. I don't know who she is, bro. She doesn't really speak any English. And you know, when you're on those buses in those countries, there's always like stops every couple of hours or so, so you can stop and get food, use the bathroom. So we take one of the stops and we get food and we get back on the bus. I turn my head to look out the window and she drops something from her plate in my bag, like sharing with me. And as I caught her look, like she started giggling. I was like, what? Like, it was amazing. Like people just like share so much and you know, coming from the US, like I'm not so used to that. So sometimes you're wondering like, what's the intention? But for the most part, it's pure, man. It's pure, it's pure, it's pure. But uh, things are not perfect. There were times when everybody and their mom was asking me for money in certain areas in Tanzania. And in Kenya, there's a lot of corruption with um, authorities, like police and things are always asking me for IDs and passport and a lot of unnecessary things. Like you can't just like free roam anywhere. But those are like the only con. But for the most part, I was treated like really, really well. Really, really well. Like I love it. Okay. <laughs> so dating dating well you know i gotta keep it real man you know when you're traveling especially in your 20s you know you're gonna do your thing you know you're gonna meet people you don't want to have some fun like don't deny yourself so yeah of course i was out there you know meeting some of the local ladies and it was nice it was nice but um 
Yeah, you know, when, you, when you're in these countries and you're coming from the U.S., you know, a lot of them, they want this, man. They want this. A lot of them want this. And most times when you're in the moment, uh, maybe you'll do people a favor here and there, like buy them a beer, buy them a little food, you know, just so everybody have fun. But sometimes they do take it like a little far and they think you're rich. And I'm like, bro, like my shit has a limit. Like my bank account is not endless just because I'm coming from the West. But I understand because it's, it's ridiculous. Like in countries like Tanzania, um, 10,000, not 1,000, 10,000 shillings is equal to about like three or four dollars, something like that. Very, very, very little money. And the gap between the two currencies is humongous. So most times when people ask you for favors and things like, you'll just be like, whatever, you know, just cause it's like nothing. You just want to bless them up. And I did that a few times, but there were times when it got a little out of hand. Back to what I'm really talking about, like the dating. Um, the women here, in these countries, they're very, very, like, they're very sweet and feminine. And I love that. Like, they'll quickly, um, like, be very submissive to a man. They, I like, they, they really stick to their feminine role. I hope nobody take that the wrong way, but that's how it is, man. They really stick to their feminine role. I mean, they're so beautiful, like, man, and... The African women there, like the ones that live there, they're they're so naturally like shapey and the clothes they choose to wear, like they're just really humble and those things. They're nice, man. It's nice. And you meet if you meet a woman out there, what you'll notice as a man, I'm talking to the dudes out there, you'll notice that they will quickly tell you, um, I love you and drop all these you know, love bombs and things and so much care very quickly. Within a day, probably, a day or two. And for us coming from the U.S., we're like, what? Like, you must be like, what? Like, you love me? You know, like, we're going to think, like, they have some intention. And that is, that will be the case with some of them. Don't get me wrong. That will be the case. But they will try to, you know, get to your pockets and tell you anything. But for the most part, on both sides, men and women will quickly tell you like how they love you. Like not even as through dating, like even like dudes I've met have told me that and at times I wanted to cringe I almost wanted to cringe to say it back. Like it's it's not good. That's something I gotta work on. But it just shows you how quickly they're able to to love sh love and show love in those countries. For us coming from the West it might be weird just because of how toxic media and music and things can be. It just programs our brain to think that someone is always like lying or cheating or, you know, you know how things are. But there, what I realized is when they say them those things, they actually mean it. And the reason they do those things so fast is because they're grown in love, they're raised in love. So it's easy for them to show love. So, it's not weird for them to express those things so quickly and then they actually mean it. But yeah, that's one thing I learned out there. So I gotta, you know, I gotta loosen up. I still gotta loosen up a little more. You know, we're not perfect, we're human. That's one of my flaws. But yeah, I've noticed that they are, they open up very fast, the women there. So the last thing I wanna cover is the expenses. Now, through my experience, through Kenya and Tanzania, the cheaper experience for me was Tanzania. Um, especially because like the the currency rate to the US dollar is such a big gap. You could get literally, um, you could get like five people a plate of food for about $4. In the US, you're spending at least $40 to feed that many people depending on what you get it's in Nairobi things were a lot more expensive because I was in the town area the whole time so they're trying to give you like city town like prices which it was still cheap compared to US things but expensive for um, their currency but yeah I, sp I did not spend too many too many dollars out there and what me when I travel, I don't do too many tourist attractions. Like I'm usually always in local places, volunteering, doing things where I'm not spending so much money. Therefore, I saved a lot. But 
I would say for someone for all right, I would say if it's your first time going to Africa, I would choose Tanzania because one is very affordable, the language is easy, it's very authentic to African culture, and it's just a good way to come in because there you have a lot of culture. You could go meet the Maasai, you could go on safari to Serengeti, you could go to Kilimanjaro, you could go to Dar es Salaam and party up, Arusha, there's many places. And I didn't even go, I, I don't even think I covered 20% of the country. Tanzania is a huge country in East Africa. I was only in Dar es Salaam, Morogoro, Arusha for a little bit, and Moshi for like one day. So I barely covered 20% of the country. But there's many places I heard of them. Wanza, Zanzibar, I didn't even go to Zanzibar. But many, many places. So it's very, very affordable. But yeah, man. Overall, my experience was amazing. I feel so proud of myself that I was able to go out there and do everything on my own, traveling alone, you know, just out there, out there, out there. And I learned a lot, man. I learned a lot. And I'm definitely going to be back out there. I don't know when yet, but very soon. Yeah, man. One love. Live your best life. Go out there and get what you want, man. Live it up. Live it up. Have fun. Smile. Don't take yourself so serious. So, thank you for watching. Like this video. Um, comment something nice if it inspired you to travel. Any questions you got, you could DM me. Anything like that. So, till next video. Peace.